Uh, Google and Apple make it insanely easy to self-publish your apps. Um, so really there's no excuse if you have an idea and you have some effort that you can put towards something. There's no excuse to not have an app if you want it. Right now. Absolutely. I need to right go. now. Right now. Go right now. <laughs> Start with go, go the team up. One, then do an <laughs> go team up with a designer uh, to design it, get you really polished graphics for inclusion in the application, build an app, publish it, um, do it on multiple platforms, build a back end, and you'll get hired. There's a lot of meetups. Meetups. Um, okay, meetup.com. Meetup.com. Race Labs actually hosts one um, every other month or so. It's called Drinks on Tap. It's uh, a mobile meetup specifically. Oh, yeah. So you've got Android developers, iOS developers, designers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's other mobile meetups. There's also specific design meetups as well. Um, okay. And I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, there's also like local workspaces, uh, like shared workspaces, uh, mm -hmm. work bar, um, and they also have open nights where like, a lot of mobile developers come in. Okay. NS Meetup. Uh, now I'm thinking of the, the actual names of the other local meetups. There's Coco Heads. And Coco Heads, they have a monthly meeting at MIT. Um, and it's just a bunch of iOS and Mac developers in a room talking about the problems they're having and everyone solves everyone else's problems. So a good place to meet developers. Um, NS Meetup or uh, NS Happy Hour. Uh, these are two other uh, iOS specific meetups that you know developers might find interesting. Thank you. That's helpful. I'll throw in that uh, local X actually runs one as well. Uh, Mass Mobile, that's about quarterly. And that's more generalist. It's not a uh, Android or iOS. And, um, it discusses kind of just the, the shape of the mobile industry and trends and things like that. It's not super technical. Uh, interesting. Oh, anyway. A mobile Monday. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Mobile yeah, Monday. Who is is that a meetup.com one too? Or is uh, that somebody else? No, that's the one off. That's the, that's the actual name. It's Mobile Monday, and they have different branches throughout the country. We do an internship. I mean, if we yeah. have a ton of interns in the winter and in the summer, I don't. We actually don't have a lot of technology interns. So, like, we, we have a ton of marketing interns and creative and stuff. So, you know, go. You can go on, and all the other agencies, I'm sure, have internships as well. So, if you're able to do it and get that real world experience, like, that's the best way. I mean, you'll and lots of you'll, undergrads here do co ops. On, yeah, you'll work on real stuff. You know, be able to build. But I would just say again, echo like just get your portfolio if you're. If you're, if you're a software engineer, like build something, put it in their hands that they can actually look at it and touch and feel it. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a real differentiator if you're looking at a resume and somebody has something oh, yeah. published in the App Store or something. And you, yeah. can go and, you can go download it without ever meeting them. I mean, it's, right. uh, it's, it's, it's definitely compelling. Maybe the more like generalized case for that is putting stuff on GitHub if you're a developer. Any projects you're working on, throw it on there. Um, it's not necessarily mobile specific, but it can be. So I got into mobile development because uh, one of my former bosses at one of my co-ops said, you should make this app for us. I said, okay. Um, but I enjoy mobile development because I love working on consumer-facing products. And it's such, a, it's such a huge market that's growing insanely fast. Everybody's got an iPhone or an Android phone. Um, since that initial app, which was traffic app, uh, I went off and made two apps on my own called Catch the Bus and Catch the T, which work in... Uh, Boston Transit System, and just the ability to make Catch the Bus in like a long weekend over Thanksgiving break, be in the App Store, have my friends actually get a useful app and use it on a daily basis, just get that feedback, uh, it's been very rewarding. And yeah, the things that these smartphones can do and the possibilities that they open up with all their sensors and the fact that you always have them, it's just a total different medium, it's not a computer, it's it's that you sit down at, it's, it's something personal, it's yours, you look at it all the time, you, you know, you may never be further than two feet away from it, uh, and it's, it's yours, it's not like a shared resource. So, it's always been interesting to me as far as, you know, what can we enable the user to walk away with, um, instead of having to sit in front of a larger workstation or a laptop. You know, things are getting so portable now that you have you know, such incredible power on the iPad, uh, or the iPhone even. Um, power that 
you know, exceeds everything that you could do on a desktop computer just a few years ago. So mm. there's really no limitations to what you can do now as far as the uh, types of data you can present, the types of user experiences that you can present. So that's kind of what's driving for me. I think a lot of it with mobiles was just the gadget aspect. Like I just love the, the gadgets and I mean the phones are just becoming so nicely made that you know you look at an iPhone or you look at um, some of the new other Android phones that are coming out and the iPad mini and stuff like that and they're really nicely made. I mean I guess I'm just a total nerd and I love that <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, so that that was kind of like what, what drew me to it was just yeah. that. Fun. I remember when I first got like the the first iPhone, like just amazed that like, like having oh. the internet and then like and the amount that you use it on a daily basis and you know to some extent I actually like to put it away for a little while because you get too too attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, for me, it's just like having all the information when you travel, everything you have. It's just like it really has changed the way that we that we you in between college and professional career like. It's just really insane. From when I started, you know, seven years ago at Digitas to to now, it's like I, I don't even need my computer that much. I, I really don't. To answer your question, I would say you could be proficient in both. But if I'm hiring for like a, if I'm hiring for an entry level position and I see somebody says I made this app in iOS and I made it in Android, that's impressive. If I'm hiring for a senior level position and they're not an expert in either one, then that's sort of a less impressive. Yeah. So that's well stated. So where you are, I would say just do both. Like I just I would just be looking at effort. Let this person, you know, do a Google search on iOS development and try something. Might you know. jump in. Say so I think just anecdotally, like the people I know, they they tend to specialize in one. It's really hard to be a, a, a true expert in both Android and iOS. That takes that takes a lot of a lot of bandwidth, I guess I'd say. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I think most jobs hire for specific positions. You're, you really want to be a domain expert in one. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that with any huge amount of authority. It's just kind of anecdotally how I feel that out. I wouldn't say that people are moving towards iOS. I would just say, for whatever reason, iOS users tend to spend more money on downloading apps. Totally buying things in those apps, you know, app store or in app upgrades, for whatever reason. Um, Maybe it's just easy, higher ease of use. It's yeah. very easy to, like you said, it's very easy to download something. Well, They're making it e even easier now where, like, you know, just an app store, you download it, you can buy stuff right in the app. It's it's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Apple, Apple captured the, yeah. the premium market for mobile devices. Sure. You know, they own the premium market. If you, if you want the premium phone, you're getting an iPhone. It's, mm -hmm. People go. People lead with iOS first because uh, revenue per user. You know, if you're a, a capitalist, uh, and that's a big input into things, that that's huge between Android and iOS. Uh, you know, the the iOS store. I think I read like in in one year it made more than Google Play has since inception. Basically, there's a really big difference in the amount of people who are actually spending money to buy apps. And I think like a lot of companies, that's probably kind of a catalyst of why they they lead with iOS. And, uh, I'd also echo that I think yeah, that's generally more demand for iOS Boston in this this startup scene right here. Well, numbers supported too. I mean, we're working on an app right now. We're actually sunsetting an Android app because after having it out for two years with both, we just I mean the, the numbers are so skewed towards iOS, and this is a free app that's being downloaded. And so like we you know when we're updating now this app, we're we're recommending to our client to. It's not worth your development effort to, to go back and do this Android update. Like, just like stick with your iOS app and like put your development money into that to be able to use it. So, I mean, that's not always the case, but I mean, in this particular case, we're able to look at the numbers and just say they don't lie. Here's a downloads in 12 months. Here's a downloads in 12 yeah. months. You put the exact Specific same metrics, right? Yeah. You put the exact same advertising dollars into both, saying downloaded on iOS and downloaded in the Android market, and, and you can see what the what the rate is. So. Uh, I'll, I'll take the easy one and say Android <laughs> fragmentation, maybe just from a, okay. a pure like developer standpoint. From a that's developer a, standpoint, that's hard. And yeah, I mean, if, if that term isn't clear, it's just there's a lot of different Android devices on a lot of different versions. On, on iOS, you can pretty much rely on everyone to be on the the top version within a, a few days, and that's what you cater towards. 
Uh, Android, you still have people on very old versions and on different devices with keyboards and not keyboards. And uh, from an app development perspective, that's challenging. So you're developing an app for iOS for either the iPad or the iPhone, and we've seen waits as long as a month and a half. We've seen turnaround as short as three hours. So you have to submit your application to Apple and, wow. and wait. So if you've got you're a, at their mercy. You're at your mercy. So if you release an application and you have a bug in your application, or you need something changed in your application, you have to wait. Um, and it's really a black box. You have no idea when Apple's going to get to your application. Uh, you can expedite it, but you only get one expedite, one expedition per client per year. It's like a golden ticket. It is, it is the golden <laughs> ticket. Do not abuse it. Um, you rush to get something done, and then you might sit and wait. Versus oh, Android Marketplace. Yeah. It's submit. You're live. It's okay. you know. Very different. At least it used to be that way. Now there's a, a short delay, but you know, it's still not as bad. As that. I think most of my challenges are internal at PayPal. PayPal is such a huge company. The our QA team happens to be in San Jose, which is unfortunate. I'm trying to change that. Um, but one of the things I'm trying to think of is user experience from an internal point of view. So if somebody finds an issue testing, maybe they're not a QA engineer, they're going to write a, a bad bug report that we can't really act on. Can we make that easier? Can they shake the phone and send a bug report with a screenshot of the last screen they were on, and then we just capture the stack trace that happened there? Uh, can we make it trivial to install dev builds and make it impossible to have the wrong one? Um, can I just streamline any development process? If, if we don't have test users, can I press a button and get test users? Can I save time by making dev builds and automating that? So this is just streamlining the process, getting people to stop talking to me so that I can manage my team and not outwards. That's that's my challenge. Mine's always budget. I mean, it, it's I mean, working for an agency, every every hour that every person on my team mm -hmm. spends is getting billed to to a budget. So, you know, it, it's it's trying to get people to work work hard, but also work smart. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it always comes down to we have a certain amount of dollars that that we can put towards it, and you know, we have to figure out what features can fit into that and what can. And you know, maybe you have some money left at the end of the day, and you can fit those other things in. Maybe you don't. And you're over, and you have to oh, kind of go back and work. You have to cut something because you don't have it in the budget. That must be very frustrating. It's it's less frustrating to me and more frustrating to, to my me. technology and creative teams, yeah. where I have to tell them you can't have this, oh. and they don't like that answer. <laughs>